there's a filling on the loose. Uh, if you can't tell already, we're talking about fillings in this episode. Like your scrappy doos, your fucking dick dastardly and muttleys, your yogi bears, you know, your, your, all your classic fillings. Um, what do you mean they're villains if you hate children's TV? Uh, uh, Mr. Bean. What do you mean they're villains? Where, where's Yogi Bear a villain? He steals people's food. Yeah, he's a bear. He's not got fucking retractable thumbs. What do you mean he's not going to fucking get a frying pan out there? Start fucking slapping a fucking bit of gammon on some fucking, on a, on a, on a piece of bread. He's got to do what he do what he has to. Yeah, that would be a funny one. There, just him doing the cooking show. Well, boo boo. Are you people? Today we're going to fucking cook these stuff. Um, but yeah, this is about the most. This is about uh, who is the most evil villain of all time? I'm gonna let Ash run through from in chronological order. So I forgot already. Um, starting off with this guy. Dan Sullivan. Uh, I'll give a little rundown as well. Dan Sullivan is one of the only villains on the show who has actually fucked over Phil Mitchell and won. Like he was, I think he was there. I believe it's around... It could have been 99, but he was around till about 01, I believe. Did I say Gavin Sullivan? I meant, I'm pretty sure I meant, I meant Dan Sullivan. Uh, started in June 99, left in August 2021. Uh, he was with Carol. Uh, he, had a, uh, he had a fling with Bianca, but he did become arch nemesis with Phil Mitchell. He bought the Vic off Phil Fiverr and then set him up. He then had a relationship with Mel and then fucking in the end he is in the limelight for being framed for who shot phil which is obviously lisa fowler but in the end he's found not guilty and takes and kidnaps mel for 200 grand and then flees the square (laughs) with his fucking life intact uh dan sullivan is one of the only EastEnders villains who have truly gotten one over on Phil Mitchell. Yeah, next lad here. Archie, Archie. Mitchell. Okay. Um, obviously he was involved in basically he was only there for like he was there for like a year and six months ish. Uh, he started in July two thousand eight, left in December oh nine. He very quickly became one of the most despised characters in the fucking show's history because obviously we've introduced we've introduced Ronnie and we've introduced Roxy both have a pretty frayed relationship with the fucking with their dad the dad sent Danielle who was Ronnie's baby at the time away and only told Ronnie about Danielle just before Danielle gets fucking run over. And he's controlling, he's manipulative, he manipulates and abuses Peggy. Um, and then, uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's like after he dies, but there's also some like sexual abuse with Ronnie going on. Like, poor. And he very quickly became a very famous fucking piece of shit. But in the end, he died. And uh, he also he also sexually assaulted Stacy. And in the end, he only had weeks left to live anyways. And that's when Stacy clomped him over the head with the Queen Vic bust, killing him and getting the famous, I killed Archie. It was me. Um... But yeah, Archie, pretty good villain, all things considered. May was very despised, and honestly, it was the it, it culminated in that in the Who Done It plot, which was very fucking good. And full credits to him. Next up, we have Dan. That's Andrew. We have fucking Steve Owen. Steve Owen. Steve Owen. Um. Steve Owen was he killed Saskia. 
with an ashtray. He obviously had his whirlwind romance with Mel. Um, and he had a big... He obviously had a massive feud with Phil. Uh, because... Well, I don't even remember why. But in the end, obviously, he dies in a massive car chase. And it's the most, like, hollywood Stenders was. And Phil has to save uh, Louise. And Steve just goes up in flames in a burning car. A very interesting villain. He had a very weird relationship with his mum. It kind of bordered on incest. It was very bizarre. Um, But all in all, a very strong villain. And... Except he was a bit more likable, though. Um, he, he had some depth to him. But yeah, decent villain. Probably not most evil. If we're ranking on most evil, uh, Archie's Archie or Dan is probably the most evil. Uh, Steve it was a bit more sympathetic. And, and finally, you have Dan Watts. The last man we need to know introduction, Dan Watts. Obviously slept with multiple women, became Dirty Dan, cheated on his wife multiple times. Well, yeah. well, well, it was cheated by the sense of... Oh, I mean, to yeah. fact, they never even consummated the marriage, did they? No, no, because it was like, Dan, I love you, Dan. I want to... Dan, can we please have that, you know, intercourse one time? Dan's like... Uh, no. Angie, I, I would, but... Uh, you see, the dog's just got sick, so I have to attend to him. Um, obviously it's, just, then he... it's just not working. It's not working. And then, obviously, he died. It was dies, he gets shot into a canal... Which still leaves me with questions of how the fuck did no one like see him? Is if you're trying to kill him, surely you'd look around to make sure it isn't just we. But but still, these standards. He obviously comes back in all three. He has that famous L princess with Sharon. Uh, he cons his way into the pub again in all four, I believe. He ends up like buying the. I believe he buys the fake, and he throws Alfie out. Alfie. I forget what his brother's called, and... Benzer. Dexter and Granny Moon. Benzer. Benzer. Um, so, yeah. And then he dies in the fake, obviously, killed by Christy Watts. And, uh, yeah. So, I, 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 from what you described, these, the last two are, like, least least amount of villains. They are pussycats in comparison. Yeah, well, 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 Dan, what's I mean, yeah, look, Dirty Den is a villain in the sense where obviously he was a serial fucking womanizer. He was cheating on Angie the whole time. Just kept the marriage going despite her, him never really loving her. Um, obviously, he slept with his son's girlfriend uh, trying to get pregnant. Like, set up Phil for a cry, for, for the burglary. Um, I don't think he was the most evil. Obviously, in the end, they turned it up to 10 because of the old finger in the mouth. But I don't, he's probably the... On this list, he's, like, bottom two for yeah, most definitely. evil. He's definitely in comparison. Um, like, but if you just not... want token evil, you could easily... Ah, this is of all time, though. I don't really think he ranks for all time because he's kind of garbage. But in terms of just, like, morality, you do have Gray Atkins, who was a serial abuser who turned into a serial killer. Um, and, you know, probably if, like, you know, killed multiple people, killed, what, Chantel, Kush, and Tina. Um... Yeah, he's not really... Obviously, he's not of all time because he's fucking shit. But in terms of actual crimes, probably one. I mean, to be fair, obviously Phil's not viewed as a villain, but Phil has been involved in a lot of... He's been associated with a lot of murders. Uh, But you could easily throw in names like Johnny Allen in there. You could throw in... Names like Andy Hunter in there. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of potential names for most evil. Well done. I've completely fucked it. That's not ah, oh, the whole video is scrubbed now. That's not fucking Dan Sullivan. That's fucking Trevor Morgan. <laughs> the first one along's the man who abused little Mo. Oh. 
Talk to Riku the entire video. <laughs> um, no, I'll just take the abuse. Okay. Uh, I know that one guy's going to comment straight away. He, he's not even going to watch the first 20 seconds. He's just going to immediately hear you fuck her up and be like, ah, well, fuck you. Um, so, so here we have some comments. Are you by far raping your own daughter is a different type of people? Absolutely fine. Yeah. Fair, fair. Also, I will say, Dan Sullivan is also up there in terms of evil characters. So as much as I got the face wrong, uh, the crimes are still there. Uh, Archie Mitchell up again uh, yeah. his own daughter Ronnie I'm not going to read that word again uh, mentally tortured her through our, our adolescence emotionally ruined her through our adult years even up until her death tore her away from her own daughter by having the baby adopted only to tell, then tell lie and say that the baby was dead controlled yeah. the gas by a mentally broke down Peggy mentally turned down his first wife Glenda over the drink and ultimately abandoned her daughter, raped her emotionally, uh, broke her emotionally. Stacy destroyed and broke down his uh, broke down his girlfriend, granddaughter Danielle. Took the queen fifth from Peggy and failed. Was cruel and used Janine for his own sick games. Destroyed Roxy's relationship. Slash marriage with Sean Slater. He hurt Roxy far more from the outcome, but he didn't get her. It was a lesson that she had to learn, and he made sure it, it was him that that she went up crying to. Everything that we that would have come out of his mouth was a mind altering poison. He would he would manipulate anyone he spoke to for his own personal uh, gain and twisted motives. Where uh, Trevor? Trevor. Trevor Morgan was definitely an evil psychopath, but he never tried to hide it. Uh, and that's what makes Archie the more evil dangerous between the two. Archie was the devil in disguise of an old man, just wanting to sit at the end of the bar and he's retiring happily remarried. Then watching yeah. Steve Owen just play dirty and save her own backside. Both were uh, unethical, both twisted, but never what I would call evil. Yeah, in comparison to all these fuckers, mm. Dan Watts is like somehow like the night to Dan Watson Watts and Steve Owen are pussycats in comparison. Like for, for ranking them. They are, they are sheep in wolf's clothing in comparison. Like, like the first two make Dan Watts and Steve Owen seem like the Jesus Christ reincarnated. Um, yeah. yeah, he pushed Ronnie into the bar when she was pregnant, causing her to miscarry. Indeed, he had not thought for his current condition when he's an after of course, a few home through possibly being out of her was too much for that psychopath. Said way better than I thought. Thank you. It's ho- it's holy between Archie and Trevor. Uh, Archie, or word his own daughter, and Trevor brutalized his wife. Steve and Dirty Jen, now they're not in comparison. Then groomed with teenage Michelle Fowler and uh, saw Slater. Was I, it's not entirely true. Uh, was obsessed with uh, a a popular daughter, Sharon, and had desires for her. He's up there with them for sure. Okay, I'll ask you break down the the soy slater bit. So I don't necessarily. I think it's a bit of a strong word. Obviously, he manipulated the situation so he could sleep with Zoe, but. I, in comparison to how that is depicted on screens, it was not depicted like that. Fair enough. He actually didn't. So he, he groomed uh, her more than Michelle because he told her to Dennis that she was pregnant to keep him away from Sharon. But when Dennis wouldn't have sex with her, convinced her, uh, conv- conv- yeah, convinced her to have sex with him instead, get him pregnant, uh, to get her pregnant. And oh, I don't believe Dan's obsession with Sharon was sexual. He just considered her more of his child than Dennis or Vicky. He would, he would have thrown both of them under the bus for her. I mean, I will say they they didn't necessarily play into the into the idea, but obviously there is a reading of Dan and Sharon. Because you have Den, who's jealous of his son, who is with his daughter. And he's jealous of his son. Um, I, there, there's definitely a card to be read into that sort of thing. I, there is a case to be made, for sure. Obviously, if... I mean, like I said, all this from the Soap Study video, mostly, pretty much. That's most of my read on the Den Watts thing. But, like, he describes it as if... If if Den believes Sharon is the princess, then he is obviously the king. 
you know, and that's generally how he views it. I think there's only two people Dan has ever loved in his life, and it's him and it's Sharon, so. Actually, him, himself, and I. And then Sharon. Um, the lift he said in the show after he said Sam said, sorry, he, yeah, uh, sorry, didn't want to do it, but then kept telling her that Dennis would leave her if she didn't get pregnant. She felt like she had to. Dan was pursuing her, pursuing her until she gave in. It was. Well, Fair well, enough. Well, Dennis and Zoe called Dan out for his feelings for Sharon. I went past the feelings of father he loved. You're jealous, Dennis. You don't actually want me. You're pushing Dennis because he's young and he's, he's had Sharon. So, and Dan never denied it. They were playing it subtle until the end, around Dan's last Christmas. It became very clear, really clear. Paraphrasing wise, remember, she doesn't need Dennis anymore. I can give her the stability that she needs. Sharon, you sent my darling away. Then my darling was the one person who I loved, who made me happier than anyone else. Then, that's me, I'm that person. Not anymore, Sharon. He, he wanted Dennis's place, he wanted to be the one Sharon was with. The last sentence, I've been watching Dennis the mice, and I said to my husband, I think Dan wanted to be with Sharon. But he fancied her, and my husband looked like I was crazy, laughing face. But yeah, he was so weird about Sharon, sick on. I think I think he was just borderline obsessed with her in the sense he didn't want to shag her. He just he he just. I mean, there was def. Look, I will say, I will, I will, I won't like. There is definitely, like I said, there's definitely an angle where that's heavily implied. I mean, it's heavily implied, but I think I think he just you know want he just thinks that no one else can have her. Yeah, but is that not the similar thing? I would I guess so. Um, <laughs> Steve and Dan are absolute chains compared to Archie and Trevor. So true. Archie Mitchell, but that doesn't mean that the others aren't even. Archie was the most difficult because of the things he had done, but also how he interacts with people in general. Every conversation and interaction he had there was a motor. He would twist everyone's words and make them try and feel a certain way in order to meet his goals. Archie was truly evil to the core. Anything to add? Great, no. It uh, has to be actually for what he did to his own daughter. The rest are still evil in their own ways, so. As others have pointed out, Trevor is closer to Archie's kind of evil. You know, Steve and Dan were definitely arseholes, but had nothing on those two. I thought almost everyone in this comment section agrees that, or fuck, it, fuck off, uh, section agrees that Archie's the most evil. Compared to Trevor and Archie, Steve and Dan are saying... Ah, uh, just, just run, just rattle through it, because it's Archie, Grey, Archie, Trevor... Uh, yeah. I think it's a foray with, with one of the four and three others. The most evilly stand of villains of all. Uh, Archie Mitchell, Babe Smith. I, I thought that was Aunt Babe, but I don't think. Yeah, it's Aunt Babe. That's Aunt Babe. How the fuck is she? It's not. It's not that. Well, she is a. She does do some dodgy shit, but I don't think she's that evil. Uh, James Wilmot Brown may write. Uh, James Wilmot Brown was, uh, he attacked Kathy, uh, in a not so savory way. Um, and he was involved in the Wilmot Browning, the Fox Brown, I don't, I don't know, but like he was, he was supposed to be in that plan where he was going to buy up the square with Max and make everybody suffer. But they went, ah, this is a bit shit, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, let's not fucking have this over three years. May Wright, she was the one who kidnapped Dawn's baby and kept on trying to kidnap Dawn's child. Obviously, she, it was the storyline where they were going to have a kidnapper, but the Madeleine McCann stuff came out. But Mad May was kind of great. I did did really enjoy her as a character. Um, and she obviously has the famous ending where she turns the gas on and lights a cigarette and just boom. Well, fucking that's explodes. The, that's the one where the house just fucking explodes. Yes. Uh, There's a really good exit. Um, Oh, I had a, I don't know the name. Uh, yeah, I guess, obviously, this is probably most evil and her impact isn't that high. But in terms of, like, really dodgy shit, you do, you do have Stella, who abused Ben. Like, this, like, fucking... This timid little shy woman who abused... Phil Mitchell's son, um, 
and didn't really get any justice for it. Uh, you know, just in terms of actual evil, that's pretty fucking evil. Yeah, yeah. All just because Phil never really loved her. Uh, I just want to quickly wrap through these guys here. The only one who thought of Aunt Babe. I was trying not to think of Aunt Babe very much. Babe was too evil even for East Dennis. She made Judine look like an Asian squire guard. I have no idea if they're being sarcastic or being true. She's a whole different type of evil. She gave me chills. Honestly, even in this list, Mad May stands uh, out as being not as evil as the others. More mentally unwell. That poor mallet, pure mallet. You have a point there. I'm still, not, I, I'm still not sure. I totally agree. May was mentally unwell, but so were Archie, Babe, and Wilma Brown. They were all both mentally unwell and filled with malice. May was br- uh, brimming with malice. She was jealous because she couldn't have a baby, and Dawn did. Should have saved her anger for Rob. For Rob alone. Read that again. It says she forgave. I sp- just sorry, just to interrupt this. I I do. I will say May did. Uh, Babe did do some pretty dodgy shit. I don't know how evil she is in comparison, but uh, she she neglected. She she neglected Sylvie, who is like uh like shirley's mom and like she uh uh she she had some form of like uh like um i don't know if she had alzheimer's or dementia but she had she was in a care home and she would just manipulate her and like leave her out in the cold and like basically tried to kill her uh, multiple times just because stan always preferred sylvie um Blah, blah, blah. God, where is where's Sylvie? Go on, tell me where Sylvie is. Um, dead. yeah, she is dead. Um, she was terminally ill. Um, and yeah, she was abusing her sister. Yeah, she had dementia. Uh, but yeah, I Babe did do some pretty fucked up things. Uh, I'll allow Babe to be up here. She was quite evil. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, do, 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 blah, blah, blah. I said she forgave him and uh, absolved him and persuaded, yep. persuaded him to help her hold down prisoners so that she could force her to have uh, a cesarean and to help her, uh, help her baby. Then later on, May stopped on and burnt her, uh, her, her, him, her him and tried to kill her before she killed herself. May was only a few small steps away from being Emmerdale's being a Julia. May was one of the most evil characters ever played. It was such a relief when she was killed off for good. Um, I think we ended there. Honestly. Was she like Mina? I don't think so. Mina was a different beast entirely. Mina makes some of these fucking characters absolute pussy cats in comparison. Absolute fantastic serial killer. Lovely stuff in Emmerdale. At that time period, even if the show is a bit fucking boring. Sorry, Emmerdale fans. Yeah. Um. So, who is the most evil EastEnders villain of all time? Tell us in the comment section. Once again, I did mistake the first man as Trevor. Mo- Excuse me, Trevor Morgan. In he is Trevor Morgan instead of Dan Sullivan. But Dan Sullivan was a pretty decent choice, nonetheless. At the end of the day, someone's going to tell me I'm wrong anyway, so I've corrected the record. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to keep on watching, watching Wolford. Join us in the next one. See you then. Bye bye. Just very quickly to end on a high note. Bobby Beale was not mentioned once. Hey, come on, you fuckers. Mention Bobby Beale, the best serial killer. Anyway, so that's our shit. See you in the next one. Fuck you, bye.